Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome. We're sorry that we're we're a tiny little bit later than ten. Um, we just had a few technical problems, um, but we are ready to go, and we're really pleased uh, that you could all join us for another social hub session. Good morning, good morning. Lots of people flooding through the doors, which is great. We've got lots of interest this morning in in Sunu, um, so we're glad that you could all join us. Good stuff. Well, as always, we'll give it a couple of minutes before we um, before we kick off, just to give uh, give people a bit of time to finish the cornflakes. Um, but yeah, good morning. It's really good to be back um, after our, um, our our usual sort of two week two week gap. Um, but we're back back again for another assistive technology social hub session, and we're really really pleased you could join us. Um, if, if anybody's never been to one of these sessions before, welcome. Um, if, if you are a regular attendee, welcome back. And we've got lots of regular attendees now, which is fantastic, but we're always really pleased to, to see new names popping up. Um, so if you are a, new, a newcomer, um, this is the AT Social Hub with Sight and Sound Technology and uh, Seascape Society for the Blind up in Fife in Scotland. My name's Sam, uh, representing Sight and Sound Technology, and uh, I've got my friend here, Stuart Beveridge uh, from from Seascape. Morning, Stuart. Good morning, Sam. How are we doing up in the, up in Fife? All good. Yes, yes, not too bad. The weather is starting to improve, as we always kind of talk about on uh, at the start, don't we? So um, yeah, I love so, the weather report. Before yeah, we all down. good. Good, good, excellent. Yeah, um, and also this morning, as many of you already know, we've got Diego Mendoza joining us from Sunu. And where where are you actually uh, based, Diego? Hey, Sam. Yes. Uh, well, good, good morning, first of all, to everyone uh, joining in today. Uh, right now I'm in Mexico, so wow. it's a bit early, earlier, uh, uh, but good morning to everyone. Yes. What, what time is it, Diego? In the, so in... it's 4.05 a.m. <laughs> wow. Wow. I mean, th that's serious commitment. Thank you. I, I had no idea when, when we arranged this that you were going to be... Um, joining us from Mexico. Um, I, I presume somewhere in Europe, but but wow, that's 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 brilliant. So thank you for that. <laughs> really appreciate it. Um, so there we are. That's that's <laughs> that's uh, that's all of us, uh, your, your sort of panelists this morning. Um, and before again, before we kick off, just a few parish notices. Um, please use the facilities. If you do want to get involved in this morning's session, there will be um, moments where Diego will say allow allow questions and any observations, etc. Um, but we do have a chat box facility. Uh, if, if you're new to Zoom, um, that we have a chat box on the the, the bottom sort of toolbar of the uh, of the of the screen. Um, if you're using a screen reader, um, you can use Alt and H on a Windows keyboard to open the chat box, or Command and H on a, a Mac. Um, and also, um, if you'd like to actually uh, voice your your questions and actually um, yeah, ask ask Diego directly. Um, you can raise your virtual hand um, using Alt and Y on a Windows machine, Command and Y on a Mac. If you raise your virtual hand, I can then unmute you, and uh, and you can you can get involved in the session. Um, so please do. Um, that's what these sessions are all about. We want to know. Uh, we want you to challenge the technology. We want you to share your experiences and uh, and, and and get involved. So please do. Um, yeah, let us know. Good. Well, uh, the, the the numbers have have have, um, have have sort of flattened out a little bit. We've got seventy people in the room, which is amazing. Um, so yeah, without further ado, we'll we'll kick straight off, and um, I'll hand over to Diego to show us everything. Suno, thanks, Diego. <laughs> I think. Diego's lost for words. Obviously, the the, the occasion's overwhelmed, quite overwhelming. Uh, right, so sorry. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, we can now. You, Diego. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Absolutely. So, let me go ahead and start right here. Hopefully, you can see me. And I'm going to start sharing my screen. And can you confirm if you see it? Yeah, we got it. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. All right. Well, again. Uh, Sam Stewart, thank you so much for, for inviting me, for having me, and thank you everybody that's joining us. Um, this is Diego from Sunu, and well, of course, I will be 
talking a bit about uh, our, our star product. So that's the Sunu band. And you will know more about some of the other uh, projects, updates, and new features, of course, that we have been working on. So before we get started, I would like to do a brief introduction on Sunu at the company so that you can uh, know how it came to be and of course what it is today. So first, uh, Sunu was founded in 2013. We're a company based in the United States. That's why you may uh, get an uh, accent there. <laughs> uh, but we have been manufacturing products since 2016. Uh, right now we have partners in over 30 countries and clients in more than 50. Um, and of course, uh, some of our partners include uh, Slide and Sound. So I uh, kudos guys for hosting this uh, webinar for us. So more about Sunu. Um, the Sunu band has been featured uh, by the NFB, Perkins, the Washington Post, MIT Technology Review, um, CNN, Shark Tank. Uh, and we were most recent re recent, recently featured at Sony's television, Meet the Drapers. Um, it's uh, compared to Shark Tank. Um, and we did pitch, we actually got to the final, uh, which was very good. And we were also recently featured by Forbes as actually one of the smart mobility um, aids helping the blind community maintain social distance. So without further ado, let me tell you more about the Suniband. In a nutshell, the Suniband is a sonar sensing bracelet. Uh, it actually vibrates to indicate an obstacle's direction, proximity, and size up to 16 feet away. So the sensor actually works like an invisible white cane. Um, if there's an obstacle within that uh, range, it will be picked up and translated into vibrations on your wrist. And the intensity will depend on the distance. Uh, what I mean by that, let's say a parking sensor of a car uh, of course the closer you get to another car the the, the more it beeps right well the sunu band works just like that but with real-time vibrations on your wrist um, on top of that of course you have a fully inclusive navigation app that works as your virtual sighted guide so it speaks out where you are uh, the streets that you're crossing places that are around you. And of course, it takes you safely from point A to point B. Uh, so some of the things that you will be able to do with the Sunu band will be to walk without the fear of uh, hitting your head and your body every few steps uh, to explore unfamiliar places. Of course, it, it doesn't matter if it is the first time that you're visiting a place and you will be able to detect the presence of people and obstacles around you. Um, we, it, this was recently added to the list, but of course you will also practice um, social distancing. I'll get to everything uh, in, in greater detail in a few moments. For now, let me play you a video of the Sunu band. Let me a moment. Can you hear the video, Sam? No. My parents are. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we've we've got audio, but I'm not seeing any visual. Um, oh, got... sorry. It's okay. Uh, PowerPoint never we've got... plays my video, but I uh, I will play it here. Surprise! My Thank friends you. are impressed. They see me walk faster, more confident, even more joyful. But just if you know my little secret, my Sunuban. It's like carrying an invisible white cane for my upper body. It looks like a smartwatch, so no one notices it. But if there's an object or person near me, it warns me through vibrations. I stop bumping into walls or really anything. It helps me find doors, keep a safe distance when in line, and much more. That's just a video. Um, okay. Uh, 
Okay, great. Now here is the design the Sunu band. So let me describe it for you. Um, you're looking at a at a small uh, watch, so it's like any any other watch. You wear it on your wrist, and it has a sonar sensor. It has two buttons on the side, and it has a touchpad on on top of it. Uh, you of course also have a USB port, micro USB port, uh, because the Sunuban of course is a rechargeable device. So wearing wearing the Sunuban, uh, first of all, I would like to mention and reiterate that the Sunuban is a mobility aid that does not replace the white cane or a guide dog. So you wear it on the opposite hand of your of your cane or your dog. That's at least what we uh, usually recommend so that you have the freedom to point the band in any direction of interest. So the Sunoban has a sensor, the one that I was talking to you about. That one actually aligns to your to your thumb. So when you're walking, your hand is next to your hip and it's resting as it usually would. Let's say that you walk with your uh, hand uh, rested next to your to your hip. Well, that way the sensor points to whatever's in front of you. And as I was mentioning before, everything picked up within that range will be, of course, uh, translated into vibrations on your wrist. So the design is very ergonomic. It's very, very light and you can, Without without any uh, risk of uh, being uh, like calling too much attention to your wrist, it's only the the Sunuban and the sensor, so you actually don't need to do any weird movements with your hand or hold it in in weird positions. Uh, you can simply walk uh, naturally. So first of all, we have the obstacle detection feature of the Sunuban, which is one of the most um, appealing ones. And the obstacle detection feature has an indoor mode and it has an outdoor mode. So for the indoor mode, you can actually detect obstacles all the way up until eight feet or two, 2.5 meters. And think of the width of your shoulders as far as the narrow detection area. This one is optimal for navigating indoor spaces and quickly finding gaps. So you, you can actually customize this 100% and you can adapt it to um, a shopping mall, a restaurant, a cafe, your office, hopefully soon, right? Uh, and you can also adapt, let's say to a subway if you're a public transportation user. Um, the possibilities are, are endless here. And again, you can fine tune the sonar for each one. For the outdoor mode, this one is of course optimal for outdoor spaces as it actually detects uh, up to 16 feet. So that would be 5.5 meters. And this one has a wider detection area. So with this one, you will find it useful when you are trying to locate signposts, uh, tree branches, bushes, um, glass doors. If you, uh, if you're if you're low vision, and this mode is actually very good for when you're walking at a faster speed. So of course you will need more anticipation of obstacles and a wider protection. Um, again, this one is 100% customized to uh, whatever you need it to. Whether you live in a in the countryside or in a crowded city and you're walking your, your dog at the park, right? So now we're going to talk about more in depth in, of the first feature of the Sunday band, the obstacle detection. So there are many scenarios where you can uh, understand and you can use it. Uh, so maybe when, you're, when, you, when, you, when a sighted guide is helping you, um, I'm going to do a real life example here. Let's say that you are doing your groceries or you're at a shopping mall. Um, you get there, but maybe 
the sciatic guide it doesn't understand like the entire um, presence next to you. So you can of course use the Sunu band when you are when you're with a sighted guide. So when you're when you're standing in line and you're ready to pay your your groceries, you will be able to understand that the person in front of you is moving, applying a reverse. I'm gonna say reverse engineering on the on the obstacle detection because the person in front of you is triggering a constant and very um, intense vibration. But as soon as the person in front of you takes a step forward, you will be able to feel the vibration decreasing. So you you don't actually have to touch the person in front of you with the cane. You can just feel that the person move. Um, so again, for gap finding in the supermarket is finding aisle openings or people moving around you. And you also have, well, the Explorer feature that's more focused on the outdoors and all of this happens thanks to the obstacle detection feature. So I've talked a bit about the obstacle detection part, but now I would like to go ahead and get started with the new app. So of course, on top of the Sunu band, you also get a navigation app that works independently from the band and which includes features such as uh, places, formerly known as place categories. And um, that, that one of course allows you to get a list of places nearby let's say a restaurant, a cafe, an ATM, and get turn by turn directions to get there. You also have a place pointer and a street pointer. These ones are new features. So these this features allow you to take your phone or your Sunu band and point it in any direction. And for the, for the, for the place pointer, you will be able to hear exactly what you're pointing at. This works very well when you're in a crowded space and you don't understand exactly where the ATM that you're looking for or the, or the, or the cafe you're looking for is. So you simply point it in any direction and the Sunu Band or, the, or your phone will tell you exactly what you're pointing at. And the same applies for the street finder. So you have a street finder that tells you exactly what streets you're pointing at. So that means, let's say you're standing at a, at a corner and you're pointing your phone or your, or your student band in any direction, the app will list you all the streets that are nearby, of course, listed by distance so that you know, oh, you know what I am pointing pointing at the main street. Main street is that way. But if I turn left and I point to my left, now I know that second street is, 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 is that way, right? So that's uh, some, those are some of the things that you will be able to do with the app, combining it with, with the band. Uh, there's a built-in compass on the Sunu band of course, but you can also use this, the, the compass on your on your phone. And the, the Sunu band actually, whenever you're navigating, the compass is integrated that integrated there because you usually get a list like go five meters north uh, following Main Street and then turn right. So you have the built in compass when you're navigating. And that will allow you, of course, to have a better idea of your of your cardinal points. Um, my, my favorites, that's a very good feature as well. The fact that you are able to save any places, let's say your friend's house or your brother's house, uh, if it is within a walkable distance, you will be able to navigate there as well. Um, so in a nutshell, in one, one hand, you have uh, the Sunu Band helping you with the upper body protection and on the other hand, you have the GPS navigation. So you're getting all of the feedback that you need as far as protecting what's immediately in front of you and the app taking you step by step to your uh, destination. 
I want to I want to do a little a little pause here and go to the chat because I want to hear what you have to say. So Great. Okay. Hey. Thank you, Diego. Absolutely. Lots of, of yeah, lots of really useful stuff there. Um, and we've got lots of yeah, lots of questions queued up. Um so we'll we'll fire straight in. Um so uh, lots of people asking sort of just sort of the basics really, sort of so just to sort of be clear, um you don't need the app in order to use the band. You can use them independently, correct? Yeah. That is correct. Yes, you, yeah. you right now you can actually use them both independently from each other. So the band when when you don't connect it to the app, you have a standalone device that detects obstacles and that works as a haptic watch as well. OK, and of course, the, the use the app for navigation purposes will also be fully functional without the, the band. Yeah, I'll just quickly come in as well, um, Diego. Just, I'm sorry if you've said this already. I had to uh, mute myself and take a call. Um, but as, as Diego says, you can use it independently. And the gestures, to that it's actually gesture based on the band as well. So if you know how to swipe, and double tap like you would using voiceover on an iPhone, then the gestures are the same on the touchpad of the Sunu band. So it's a pretty seamless transition and easy to get started and use. Apologies if you already said that, Diego. No, 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 absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for, for that, yeah. sort. Thanks, Stuart. I'll be interested to get more of your insight as well, Stuart. If you've uh, obviously as a, as a as a guide dog user as well, um, which we'll, we'll we'll obviously come to. Um, good. Um, Louise has asked, would you be able to use the Sunu band whilst pushing a pram, so a, a buggy? Um, have you have you had any? I mean, I, obviously, I assume the answer is yes. But um, so, if you were obviously pushing a buggy, uh, would that that wouldn't affect the, sort of the, the direction of the the Sunu band, I suppose, would it? Um, so it would you, not. Yeah, you I know mean, what I mean by a buggy. Don't, don't have you? the. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like like a stroy. No, you know, like a, a push a push chair, a kids in a in a buggy, a pram. Well, I don't know what you call them in Mexico and the US, but uh, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, you do have, absolutely, yes. <laughs> so you do have uh, the option or, or you can use it. Um, one of the appealing things is like twisting the wrist. So I'm not sure you will be able to do that when you're, when, when you're walking, but yeah. you do have the option of doing that. And I would say the only downside would be that it's going to pick up the things located on your either well it depends of course on your uh, on your wrist preference if you're wearing it on your left or your right wrist uh, so you do have the option of, of doing that but it, it will only pick up the most objects to the left to the left or to the right yeah yeah that, that was my that was my concern there exactly Diego I, I think I'm just imagining myself wearing the band and pushing a pram and uh, yeah, yeah I, I think that might restrict your your movement a bit there but if it's on your wrist then you can as soon as you're not pushing the pram obviously it's convenient and you could just just go back to, to using it in the, the, the normal way I suppose and just to be clear um, uh, Diego the sonar portal I assume would um, the preferred way of wearing it would be so that the sonar portal is is facing outwards. Is that right? Yeah. Correct. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, just obviously you're picking. That up. would be what. Yeah, that would be one option. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I just wondered if there was a preferred preferred way of of wearing it. Um, Good. And uh, what else have we got here? We've got um, Rebecca's asked. Uh, so far, you've shown. You've shown the Sunu band detecting hard obstacles in an urban environment. Have you tested the Sunu band with a traveler in a rural location? Good question. 
Um, yeah, so obviously a much, much more open space. Um, obviously, you've, you you can set distances though, can't you? In terms of its detection um, levels. Is that right? Could you just explain that again for us, The how you set the distances? Absolutely. So you do have the option of customizing the range. And let's remember that you have an indoor mode and you have an outdoor mode. So whenever you're using the outdoor mode, that, that's giving you like the full capability of the band, which is around 5.5 or 6 meters in front of you. And you can customize that, of course, uh, whenever you're in the, in the countryside or in, or in a rural area. And yes, we, we have actually had um, experiences when, whenever using it uh, outdoors and of course in, in open spaces. It actually works very well because whenever you're using it indoors, you need to customize it to one, two meters at the most so that you don't uh, get confused with the vibrations or let's say that you're in a very crowded space and there's people crossing uh, all the time in front of you. So that could happen. The fact that you might not understand if you have it at five or six meters. So whenever you're in a very open space and there's only, uh, let's say you're, you're looking for your, your male or there's something in front of you, you will be able to understand uh, more easily because there are no vibrations at all. And then you will, feel the constant vibrations yes yeah yeah um i hope you don't mind me keep chiming in um but yeah i mean it will work in rural areas as as well and um you know I, i've used it say even in you know like a, an open park um sam you did ask me to to give no, some no. guide dog experiences crack, so, crack, on, crack on, um, it's good so i've used it in an open park but really it is up to to you as a user it's your responsibility to kind of you know remember to set the, the range to an appropriate level so when you are outdoor it depends how far away you want to be notified that the obstacle is so I think I usually keep mine pretty far away, maybe four or five meter range, you know, just to, to be on the safe side. Because, um, again, in my park, there is it's things like um, that there are like two fences, for example, um, two or three fences that I really need to have advanced warning of. So I have the, the obstacle detector set to maybe five meters. And then as soon as I feel that vibration on the Sunu band, it starts to vibrate then I have a, a, a fair idea, oh, yeah, that's, um, that's the fences um, coming up. Um, and the other thing, though, that I use it for two things. One is I sometimes use it to try and locate um, the gaps in doorways so I can go safely through um, doorways when I'm indoors. And the other one is um, I sometimes struggle, as, as wonderful as my guide dog is, um, he obviously avoids poles you know like the, the level cross at when you're the green man crossing poles sam and um, yep. that you've got to press the button to cross the road so he takes me past them he won't take me obviously into it so what i do is i actually then turn my wrist um in the direction that the, the crossing pole should be and then as soon as i feel the sunu band vibrate i know ah right there's the crossing pole it's slightly to my right in a diagonal direction and then I can find the, the button. So I'm actually using it in that detection to take me to a specific obstacle, you know, locate a specific obstacle. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. that's good. Mm -hmm. That's that's all really useful stuff and, and you know from the horse's mouth, uh Stuart. Which is always always good. Um, thank you. We've got lots and lots of questions coming in, so we'll we'll um, we'll hand pick a few now, and then we'll jump back to Diego, and then we'll obviously come back to questions um, in a little while. Uh, Brenda's asked as well, and I think we've I think we may have covered most of this. But um, morning, Brenda. Um, uh, when the sooner band vibrates, how? Okay, yeah. So how does a blind person know um, if that is because there's a solid obstacle? as opposed to a person in front of them. Also, in a very busy shopping centre, would it not just vibrate all the time? So obviously you'd need to, as we've discussed, calibrate the, the distances, wouldn't you? And, uh, and um, 
yeah, to ensure you're either indoor or outdoor mode. For instance, I have mine on at the moment, obviously in a very, very small office um, with with walls sort of on top of me. Um, but I have the distances set um, so that I'm just getting a, a very slow pulse. And occasionally when I when it faces a wall or whether it faces my computer screen or the desk. Um, uh, Naomi's asked about the, uh, yeah, if you don't have the phone, Again, you can use them both uh, independently, um, as we've discussed. Does it come in different languages, Diego? So the lang language um, with, with, with the app, that is possible, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's correct. So the app has multiple languages. Um, it is natively, of course, translated into, into English. So you, you won't have a problem there. Good. Um, we'll talk about cost uh, a little later on we'll come back to that one um waterproof I'm, I'm assuming it is waterproof diego so it is not waterproof you it's splash proof. i mean we don't recommend yeah exactly so we don't recommend you swimming with the sooner band but of course daily activities like washing your hands highly recommended during this times right <laughs> yeah. washing your hands or uh taking a walk um, that's that's all uh, allowed um, as long as you don't dive with the sunu band in, in, okay. in the water. No, no diving, Stuart Beveridge. Um, <laughs> uh, thanks, Rebecca, as well for translating uh, pram. Uh, stroller, stroller, that would be the American term for a pram, wouldn't it? Uh, thanks, Rebecca Woods. Um, Good. Uh, well, I have a couple more questions. Uh, da, 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 what have we got? Um, the UK distributors would be sight and sound, Michael. Would be us. Um, so if you are interested, do get in touch with, with sight and sound and, and we can arrange a demonstration. Um, good. James has asked, since the app has been updated, what are the new commands that I can use to be able to actually use the band for a deafblind person? If that's quite a broad question, Diego, but would you be able to cover that there any any new yeah that's that's a great question yeah that's a great question um for now i'm not 100 percent sure that we do have commands uh if you are deaf blind uh, you might need some assistance setting up the, the the band uh but of course once you do um we have had some positive results for people who are who are deaf blind and of course using the band as a mobility aid whenever you're trying to detect the obstacles that are around you yes okay okay thank you um good and what we'll do is we'll 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 uh we'll get one of the uh one of our attendees to actually voice their their questions uh to begin with we'll go with arthur first and then tracy will come back to you if that's okay so arthur i'm going to unmute you um or i'm going to allow you to talk you just want to unmute yourself and you can ask Diego your question. Hi, Arthur. Hello, Arthur. Diego. Uh, a very interesting presentation. You've mentioned a point when you were talking about navigation on the app um, and being able to put in, presumably, um, destinations. But I'm, I'm interested in if you want to put a, a particular point in as like a way marker point, do you, it, does, the, it, does it have a way marker labeling feature? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Arthur, you said a marking feature a way, or a way labeling marker. feature? Um, in other words, if you wanted to put, let's say for example, a friend's home in as a destination point to be saved as a way marker. So, or let's say a, a junction of um, a particular uh, side road or something like this. I know you will be notified on the uh, on the street names, but to put actually a point as you're navigating a reference point, yeah. And if you if if that's a facility that it's got in the navigation side of the app, called the way marker table. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, great question. Uh, that's actually one of the features. Um, it's called My Favorites. So on My Favorites, let's say you're passing. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say you're you're at a bus stop that you take every day. Uh, of course, 
you, you take the bus. So you will be able to save that destination as, as a landmark, like, oh yeah, this is my, my bus stop where I take this bus, right? So you will be able to save that on the app. And next time you wanna navigate there, you can simply go to the My Favorites uh, tab and you will be able to like directly access that navigation. I don't know. If Thank you, Diego. That question. That's exactly what I was meaning. Um, I've experienced issues and I do use an application which does provide this facility. And if, for example, you go to an area where there's two or three different bus stops, it's, it's very, very helpful if you can label the particular bus stop that you need. Okay, awesome. Yes, yeah, you, you, you can do that. You will be able to do that. Um, of okay. course, the bus stop, your friend's house, uh, the, the near the park nearby or like the entrance to the park, uh, that, would, that, you, that you will be able to do, yes. Brilliant, thank you. Thanks, Arthur. Yeah, you're welcome. Great. And just a couple more questions before we move we move on. Um, we've also, um, Brian's asked, does the band have its own speaker or is all the speech delivered through the app itself? Great question. Uh, so we were, uh, or, or of course I will be covering that in more detail, but the band does not have a speaker, uh, like the hardware, Piece does not have a speaker um, you will be able to hear it talk through your phone whenever you pair the band uh, via Bluetooth to the to the app so everything as far as uh, commands um, accessing new um, uh, app features uh, will be will be spoken to you through the through your phone yes great and then last question before we move on um, this is a really good one, actually. Rebecca's asked, um, have have you or has the band been tested with that, without a long cane, so a non-cane user, um, as a low vision mobility aid? Because, for instance, some people um, absolutely don't want to use a visible aid. You know, they don't want to, you know, uh, use a, a cane or a, or a white stick, for instance. So has it been tested with, with somebody with low vision, for instance, that just uh, needs some support? Yes, absolutely. So actually, one of our uh, co-founders co is is uh, legally blind, low vision, but he, he, he doesn't use a cane um, just to like go to the top of the company. Right. But we have we have experience with uh, people who are who are low vision. And something that we always mention is the fact that the band is very very discreet. I mean, you're you're basically using a watch on your wrist. Uh, the only thing that I'm gonna say stands out a little is the the sensor, but of course that's because you need to align it to your to your thumb, and of course the sensor needs to be uncovered. But using the band, let's say for for glass doors or when or if you need the Sunu band at nine, so that you don't um, injure your your head, that's something that we have uh, encountered, and we do have people that use the band and are only um, low vision and they don't use they uh, might not have the orientation mobility training yet for 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 white cane but they they can still use the band yes great very good question Rebecca. thank you great thank you diego and there's so many there's so many questions piled up but i'm conscious of, of time so we'll, we'll we'll let you move forward with your presentation and we'll come back to the questions yeah okay all thank right you. well no, no, thank you. And we'll come back to them in a moment. Now, so I have answered some of the questions um, on, on the chat, but I would also like to resume uh, by telling you that on top of the um, navigation app and the Sunu band, you also have basic features such as a haptic watch, that you can use without pairing the, the Sunu band to your phone. Uh, the only thing that you need to do is, well, you need to pair the band at least once to your phone so that it picks up the time or well, like your time zone. Let's say, oh, okay, so right now it's uh, 1043 AM, right? So you connect the band to your, to your phone once and then you can you no longer need to connect the band to your phone if 
your purpose of using the band is solely for obstacle detection and a haptic watch, you will be able to do that. Uh, there's another um, feature that's called a phone finder. So whenever you have the band paired to your phone, you can simply press and hold a button on the Sunu band and that will trigger an alarm on your phone automatically. So you will be able to know like, well, that usually happens or we have clients uh, that actually at request this uh, a long time ago, but it was basically like I put my phone here, but somebody moved it and now I can uh, know where it is. So you can simply trigger the phone finder, right? So now taking you on a step-by-step -step tour of how things would work, um, I would like to do a bit more explanation um, on a practical side, because I was talking about scenarios and, and what goes where. But I would like to mention, though, that whenever you connect the Sunuban to your, to your phone, you no longer need to take your phone out to navigate. So everything, uh, as far as the Sunuban, will be and can be used with the buttons that you have and the touchpad. So the touchpad, I like to give this example, is like the home screen of a phone. So you can swipe through uh, apps or selections and following that same um, thing. <laughs> Uh, you can you can swipe left and right on on the Sunu band, and you will be able to navigate again between the places categories, the place pointer, uh, the street finder, uh, the the compass. So you can also customize everything on the on the menu. If you are on orientation mobility, or if you're a teacher and you're teaching the Sunu band for the first time having all of these new features and these options for you um, might get uh, overwhelming to a new student. So the fact that you can block, well, I'm going to say block, but you can like turn it on or off. The fact that, oh, you know what? I only want the Sunu Band to have a the obstacle detection feature available. Everything else, I am not interested in having it right now. So I am going to turn off the compass. I'm going to turn off the place finder. I'm going to play. Uh, I'm going to turn off the uh, street pointer. So everything can be customized now, and you do have the option of also customizing whether you want voice on or not. So you can press and hold a button on the Sunu band, and you can automatically turn off the voice on your phone. Um, and of course, as far as the uh, as far as customizing the band, everything can be done through the app. So you do have the option of simply connecting uh, the band, and once you connect it, you can turn off the voice uh, again without using your your phone. Um, one of the things that I wanted to point out is the fact that since the Sunu band is speaking to you through your phone you might need to have, a, let's say, uh, an earpiece or a Bluetooth uh, bone conducting headphone, uh, some, something in that nature so that you can hear exactly, whenever you're navigating, of course, what, uh, what the direction is or what the next direction is. So some of the, so these are some of the things that I wanted to talk about. And now, I would like to uh, basically, uh, well, the, the chat is already open, of course, but I would like to drop uh, your, your your suggestion here because we're all about feedback at Sunu. So my question to you is, what would you like to see implemented in the, in the new app? So let's say, you know what, I wanted to have a direct connection to an app delivery service, or I wanted to ask for a cab or an Uber or something. <laughs> um, I'm just giving examples, but I would love to know your, your feedback there. So I'm leaving that um, question. So if you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them there. You've opened up a serious can of worms there, Diego. The, <laughs> the chat box is gonna, <laughs> is gonna be going off the hook now. But anyway, thank you. Uh, <laughs> 
All right. Uh, of course, I've been talking on and on about uh, how you can use the band and some of the features that you have. Of course, we do have uh, learning resources. One of the things that I would like to mention is that the app is the first um, aid as far as tutorials. So as soon as you connect the band to the app, the app triggers a quick start guide. So everything that I'm telling you, the app will tell you like, oh, you have two buttons and the first button is the home button. And the home button allows you to navigate through your apps. Double click on the, on the button and you will trigger all the features. Uh, the navigate button access the obstacle detection. I would, I'm, I'm talking uh, a bit more technical, um, but th that's exactly what you will hear when you are connected to the app. Uh, you also have a hints feature on the app. So the hints feature allows you to, let's say, oh, so it, it, there are four tabs on the app and it's very um, easy and we, Try to focus, of course, on, on the client so that you can have a better experience. But let's say that you don't understand what something does. There's a hints feature that explains you like, oh, so the place categories allows you to navigate through a list of places within walkable distance and tells you exactly how to get there. I'm just giving an example. Um, but that's what the hints feature is for. Uh, you, of course, the app is fully accessible, both for um, a voiceover screen reader, depending on the on the phone that you have, but it's it's fully accessible, and the app is connected. So we're we're getting all of our information from Google Maps, and therefore the app is very accurate, and everything that's listed on Google Maps will be listed on uh, the Sunu Band. Okay, now. Again, as I was mentioning, we have the app, but we also have online tutorials. I will share the link with you in a moment. So it's very simple. It's tutorials.sunu.com um, and you will be able to access them. Uh, we also have one-on-one -on -one training sessions and training webinars uh, such as this one. So we got you covered as far as understanding how to use the, the band. So I've talked about what we have done and some of the things that you already have available for you, but I'm going to talk about more of the things that are coming. So one of the first things that we have been implementing, it's not out yet, but we want it to be out in the next couple of weeks. It's what we call the Sunu Tether. So you, as I'm talking right now to the, to the teachers or if some someone from orientation and mobility is, is listening to this. So this feature is solely focused on your experience. So we're trying to disrupt the rehab experience and make it easy for, for trainers to empathize in real time with the, with the client. So it, they can explain the student band better in a more effective and a faster learning experience. So with the Sunu Tether, you can, of course, feel the student's feedback in real time. What do I mean by this? You will basically feel exactly what your client is feeling in real time. Let's say that you are using the obstacle detection. The client will be, let's say, pointing at, at a tree. Well, just uh, popped into my head uh, from, the, from the last question, but let's say that you're pointing at a tree and you're feeling pulses and maybe the student doesn't understand what that is, you will be feeling that exactly the, the way the student is feeling it. So you will be able to uh, like better explain it. Oh, like you, you know what? You're feeling this pulses because you're pointing at a tree that's, I don't know, two meters, three meters away from you. Or you're feeling pulses because I am in front of you. Or there's a person in front of you or there, or there is is a wall, right? So you will be able to feel exactly what the, what the teacher, I'm sorry, what the client is, is feeling. And you will also be able to, let me move to the next one. You will also be able to customize everything from your band and from your app to your students. So you will be able to 
customize the interface as far as the quick access features or the, the features that I was talking about, let's say on the feature on, on the features of um, on the many features such sorry, you don't want the compass appearing there or you don't want the places uh, appearing there, you can turn them off. You can also select the risk preference for your client and you can customize the sonar. So you can customize basically the obstacle detection as far as, you know what, now we're going to do an exercise within two meters of distance and a very narrow detection area because we're doing an indoor session. That's something that we've been working on um, and something that's coming very, very soon. You're one of the first um, to know about this. So hopefully you, you like this. Advanced sonar features. That's something that we, we're currently testing. We're currently on beta. So if anybody's interested in, in, in getting an early access to this, just let us know. But I, I do remember at some point, uh, I don't know if it was, it was Sam or or Stuart, the ones that asked me this question, but they were interested in understanding the difference between a person and a wall. With the advanced owner features, you will be able to do that. That's something that I'm gonna say it's ready, but it, we're still kind of working out the details on the, uh, on, on the beta, but you will be able to now understand exactly what you're feeling. So you will be, no, you will know that that the person that I'm sorry that there's a person in front of you or, or if there's a wall in front of you. How do we do that? Basically, of course, the technology behind the band is, is bouncing sound back and forth, but you as a human have a, a of course a, a lower density compared to, to a wall, right? So the band will be able to pick up on that and translate it for you. Um, we're working on gestures. so. You can simply uh, lift your hand in a certain position and trigger like the uh, obstacle detection automatically, or let's say that you want to trigger the compass, you can do a different uh, gesture. We're working very hard on gestures. And actually from the last poll, about 80% actually prefer the, <laughs> the gestures to like the touchpad and the, and the buttons. So uh, that, that will be very, uh, good for you if you, let's say, have your sooner band and you have a handful of things that you have. You now, we want to make it even easier for you. So that's something that's uh, that's coming. And well, yeah, that's those are some of the things that that I wanted to uh, talk about today. Um, of course, we do have um, a little over six thousand users in fifty countries. We have a lot of reviews from some of our partners. And we have some testimonials online if you want to check them out. So I think I want to go back to questions, more questions. Um, Sam, Stuart, let me know. Yeah, we, we've got a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're ready. Diego, you're gonna... can, I, can I ask a quick question, Diego? Sorry, so it's just on the, as a trainer of this Sunu band, Diego, um, this Sunu Tether, so say I was training someone to use the, the Sunu band who is also visually impaired, and say I, I pointed them towards a, a wall, um, would I feel the, the vibration through, I'm taking it, I would feel the same vibration as they are feeling on their Sunu band through my iPhone? Is that correct? Have I got that? Not not through the iPhone. So right now, or, or well, that's actually a great observation. But right now, what you can do is, if you have a, a band as a, as an instructor, you can feel exactly what your client is feeling ah, on your on your wrist. Right. So as if you were using it, as if you were the student. Yes. Got it. That's so brilliant. you'd both that be was, wearing. Yeah, band. You'd both be wearing Sunu bands. I've yeah, got yeah. it now. Yes. Yeah. So we just had a couple of people actually ask about that, about um, is there a teaching band? There isn't a separate band for mobility teachers. It would just, you'd both be wearing a Sunu band, but obviously your hand would be positioned in the same place as the student. So you could, you could guide them. Um, 
Absolutely. Now, uh, el elaborating on that, we, and I don't know if that's one of the questions, but the tether is not open to everyone. So we basically need to manually add you. Let's say, Sam, you uh, requested to be added to this feature. So we basically add you because it's not open or relevant to, to everyone. But if you want it added to your, to your app, we automatically do that. But there's no different band or app for instructors we simply kind of change the app for you so that you can now access this feature great thank All you right. there is there is quite a lot of of interest in the the sort of teaching side of things we've got a lot of mobility or, or uh rehabilitation um officers on 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 the session today so um yeah brenda's also asked about um teaching children um the sunu band Obviously, it only comes in one size of, 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 of strap, doesn't it? But it can be a just, it can, you know, a, a child of, say, an eight-year-old child would be able to use the Suniband. Yeah, well, the band is, it has like a standard 20 millimeter strap. So it's like one fits all. <laughs> yeah. But you do have the option of changing the straps. If that's if if that's what you need, and we actually have clients that customize the band, like oh, you know what, I want it, I want metal straps. Well, go ahead, my friend. <laughs> that's uh -huh. something that you can do. Um, and yes, that's that that is possible. Um, of course, like the band is mostly fitted for for adults, uh, but you can customize or you can adapt the band to children yeah. as well. Just yes. like a standard wristwatch. Um, we've also had quite a lot of people asking about, can you remove the sonar element? You know, as if you could with a uh, pedometer, for instance, where you can move it and you can attach it to, I don't know, the collar of your shirt or to the your belt or X, Y, Z. You can't actually separate the, the sonar section, can you? Um, no. 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 So that for, for now, uh, the that's a built-in hardware piece so no yeah. you cannot uh detach it um <laughs> it will stop working if you do that <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah but yeah but i suppose Re in feedback. theory you you could you could attach this to your belt for instance or you could attach it to i don't know another part of your clothing if you didn't want to attach it to your wrist but obviously it's most accurate when it's worn as a as a as a, as a wrist strap yeah um yes yeah yeah good um good 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 lots of people as well asking about sort of demonstration uh trial purposes um please do get in touch with sight and sound if you are interested in in looking at the sooner band in more detail we can't offer um uh, loan um units unfortunately but what we do offer is a 30-day money-back guarantee so if you were to buy the the sooner band you'd have a month effectively to trial it if it wasn't working for you you can send it back and you receive a full refund. Uh, lots of people asking about cost as well. The Sunu band is £240, excluding VAT. Okay, and included in that, I mean, could you just talk about the app a little bit, Diego, in terms of, I mean, updates. Do you pay for updates? Do you pay for, you know, any of the services to do with the app? Right now, and that's something that we have been well, evaluating for a while, but as, as for now, as for today, if you get the band today, it's like one payment, one installment and getting uh, updates uh, constantly. I, I don't know if I mentioned this and I apologize if I did not, but you, you do have, or that's what we actually do. We're, you're, we're constantly updating both the app uh, and the firmware or the software of the band. So as long as you have the app up, Updated, you can constantly receive updates, um, correcting uh, bugs on the band as well. Okay, thank you. Um, good, good, good. Uh, let me just have a look, see the questions we've got. We've got a lot here. Uh, John has asked for additions for the new app. A step counter would be one. So a pedometer type feature. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, thanks, James. And Sorry, James. I want I want I wanted to elaborate that. Uh, I don't know if James listening, but we actually at some point we tried to implement that, but the fact that your phone already had that feature built in, like you yeah. you know you go to your iPhone settings and you can know how many steps you took, 
uh, there were people that didn't see the value in the parameter. So I would love to know more or, or why you think it would be a good feature on the on the app, James, if you could let me know. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, James. Um, good. Uh, da, 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 da. Price seems quite good. Thanks, Bunda. Um, uh, good. Yeah, yeah. Please do get in touch, Bunda and Raymond, um, if you'd like to let's have a look at it. Um, Naomi, just asking for a bit more clarity on, on paying for updates, uh, Diego. Um, so that that's is that something that with the new app that's being discussed, is that right? Whether there there will be a subscription for the app or sorry. Just, just a bit. Yeah, no, that, that's in the in the near future. That, that might be in the near future, but for now, as of, as of today, if you sign up with the uh, yeah. with the app and the band, you get I'm gonna say one installment and no charge for future updates. Okay, so just to be clear, then the app you can download for free on iOS and Android, correct? Yeah. Yes. Right now, all of the features or everything that I've been talking about has been implemented in iOS. iOS has been advanced more. So 80% um, or a little more of our users are in iOS. So that's why we uh, took that. We're, I mean, <laughs> um, like being open with you, we're still a small um, company. So we need to kind of uh, prioritize like the engineers and everything. So we started out with the with the iOS version, but the Android app is catching up, and that's the whole goal. Um, but yes, uh, you can you can download the app. It is free. Actually, the app is free, so you can download it. And uh, again, it's independent from the band, so the app you can be using it as a as a navigation tool. Yeah. And and again, reiterating, you pay the price for the band, and the updates come included with the with like the one installment of two forty nine euros. Great, great. Yep. Thank Stephanie you, Stephanie Milford. Two forty nine, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Two two hundred and forty <laughs> pounds. Yeah, that that's good. Oh, um. Good. I have to say as well, the new street pointer feature on the app is very, very good. Um, it's very, very accurate. You, all, literally, all you have to do is just just move your f phone in one direction, and it will list the street uh, in in the vicinity, and it will give you the distance. So, 270 meters, you know, um, Devril Street, whatever it might be. Um, but it's very, very accurate. Um, it's directed me to the subway at the end of my road uh, very accurately on a number of occasions. So, um, which isn't probably the, the the best thing for my waistline, but still, um, good, good. Uh, let me just see. We've got f quite a few more questions coming in. Um, Nikki's asked. So, included in the two hundred and forty pounds, do you get the teaching band too? Just to be clear, Nikki, there is no teaching band. Uh, it it would. It would, it, yeah, it would require you to buy two bands if you're wanting to obviously uh, teach um, or you know assist an, uh, you know, a, a sooner band user. Um, as a sighted person, you would need obviously to wear a band yourself. Um, yeah, good. Um, all right, let me just see. Um, Liz, hi Liz, and uh, Liz actually um, sent me some questions prior to the session, which I hope. We've covered most of Liz, um, but Liz has also asked um, quite specific, what angle will it detect over? I.e. if you're wearing on your left wrist, it will detect um, obstacles to the left above 90 degrees in front of you, correct? So obviously anything above waist height, basically, isn't it? Um, does it? Uh, does it go or rather have a range beyond this such as over to the right as well yeah so i suppose what liz is asking if you're wearing it on your left wrist you know um you know it would require you to actually rotate quite a lot wouldn't it to pick up obstacles on the right yeah does that make sense diego um so no whenever you're using the the band let's say i'm using it on my on my left wrist for example so I'm, I'm using it like this. I'm aligned to like the sensor, of course, aligned to the thumb. Yeah. But when you are, when you have the hand rested next to your to your hip, the band actually picks up a lot of, of feedback, and it, it of course depends on on the on how you customize it. But I'm gonna say up to 30 degrees 
in front of you. And whenever you like increase that distance, all you do is you expand that to a whole new level. Um, but it's like a cone. So everything within that cone is, is picked up by the band. And well, of course, the, the main uh, uh, appeal on the obstacle detection is the head and body, upper body protection. So yes, you will be uh, picking up objects uh, for your uh, for your head. Perfect. Thank you. Um, good. I've got a few questions regarding long canes and the sort of the benefits or the difference between other mobility aids. Um, so the long cane that has a grip that vibrates is quite hard to use. This is from Liz as well, um, as it will be vibrating most of the time, as there are always going to be things either at the side or in front, unless they're in the middle or a wide open space. We actually did a, we had a session with, with WeWalk a few, uh, well, last month, um, Diego. Um, and obviously there's, there's quite a bit of comparison between the two um, in terms of object detection. Um, for, we've had a few people ask if they use both hands on a long cane, um, should that pose any any issues? I mean, it's obviously it's if you had both hands on the cane, it shouldn't you know it should work in the same way, shouldn't it? Um, I suppose it's just a slightly different angle. Um, but is that something that you've you've encountered? Uh, cane yes. Users? Yeah. Yeah, actually, and I'm going to say that um, not complicates, but it's harder for the user to pick up since you don't have like the mobility of the of the wrist um but you can use it the way you were using it so if you use it uh, aligned to the pinky and not the thumb you of course can still point to whatever's in front of you with with the band and it will pick up the the obstacles of course my yeah. only concerns my only concerns would be the the mobility when you're using it with both hands yeah yeah okay so I suppose it's you know it's 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 a it's quite a personal thing. It would require you to yeah to sort of um, see what works best for you or for the for your client or student. Um, good, um, Raymond. I'm going to unmute you in just one second so you can ask. Um, uh, Louise has just asked, can you connect the band to multiple phones um, as um, yeah, if there is a, a team of rehab workers um, that bought one for teaching purposes, they could then share it. Um, is that possible? Can, or do you have to unpair it from one phone to pair it to another? Yeah. I need that... to double check on that because it has been a while since I uh, have done it. I believe we do have that option, but I don't want to. I, I don't want to lie, so I'm going to say no for now because. Yeah. Um, Usually, that's what happens when you try to connect it to a new phone. You need to unpair it from another one. Yeah, yeah, and that that process is quite simple, Louise. Um, on the app, you can just unpair it uh, quite simply on the app, and then pair it via Bluetooth to another phone. Um, good. Uh, okay, Raymond, we'll uh, we'll let you come in. We've got Raymond and Brenda up in Inverness, Diego. Any idea where Inverness is? No? Yes, yes, yes. Hi, guys. How are you? Not too bad. It's quite Hello. far from Mexico, anyway. Hi, Raymond. How are you doing? Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's actually sunny here today. I'm going to take photographs so as I'll remember it. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, do. Um, send, us, send us a postcard, Raymond. Yeah. Diego, as, as uh, Sam has already alluded to, we, we live in a very rural environment. In fact, it's the most rural environment in, in the UK. But there are areas of Mexico and America which are really rural. Would your Suna band connected to the app, would it have the ability to give you a grid reference on a, an ordnance survey map? I'm thinking more or less about the emergency situation. Okay, great question. Um, I, I want to make sure I understood the question. Um, are we talking about the app and how many places will it pick up around you, uh, being in a rural area, Raymond? Yes, because, you know, I, I could walk for 20 miles on the same road and never have a side street. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm 
you know, where I where I I, I would need to perhaps um, perhaps hill walking would be the best description. W would the Sunaban be of use there? Would it use a grid reference? So does it have GPS capability? Okay. Is that, is that, yeah. Is that, yeah. So can it pinpoint your location in terms of its GPS? The app. The app. Yeah. Uh, yeah, of course. Well, the band doesn't have a GPS built in. That's the band uses the one from the phone. Um, so as far as the obstacle detection, of course, the band works, works perfectly. Now, as far as the app, my suggestion would be to download it, Raymond, if you haven't done so. I, again, it's it's free of charge and you don't need the band to use it. Uh, but I would suggest exploring your surroundings with the band. Uh, I'm sorry, with the app, because uh, I'm not 100% sure you might pick up something. If you're telling me that within 20 miles uh, that you walk, that there are not a lot of things. I am not sure the app will be picking it up because the app is within walkable distance, but I'm like, uh, let me double check on the settings, but I think it's like three miles around you. So I don't know if that answers your, your question, Raymond. Okay. Um, uh, the, the other thing is you're using um, an awful lot of Bluetooth and GPS features here. Um, <laughs> I'm wondering about battery usage because your phone is going to die very quickly. Yeah, what's the battery life on on what on the band, or do, how does it affect the battery life on your phone? Is that is that what you? Yeah, yeah, because it's 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 to, it's relating to your phone. Uh, uh, the band itself is rechargeable. And I'm assuming you can charge it from, you know, the battery pack. Yeah. So it's a standard USB on the other end that will fit in your phone charger or your your USB battery. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So we're actually working on, and and Sam's not going to uh, let me lie here. Uh, one of the first uh, battery. Uh, enhancements was to the band because the band usually lasted like two or three days. Now it's lasting up to seven days on, on battery saving mode. And we're actually trying to do the same with the uh, connection between the band and the phone. Um, and, and of course that's t thinking on your, on your data, like on the GPS part. So we're trying to implement downloading the route or the map so that you only have to download it and use your 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 data once uh but also we're trying to implement <laughs> enhancements as far as the the bluetooth part because yes um of course whenever you're using and, and the phone at the same time your phone will be running out of, of battery uh much faster yes <laughs> okay that, that 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 answers almost all that i have to ask at the moment um apart from the the, the detection of the band, um, the last device I used that used vibration, I could actually tell the difference between a solid wall and a plant hedgerow. Do you understand what I'm meaning? It, it was so refined that you could actually detect the solid brick wall or oh. a hedgerow. Yeah. You, you could tell the difference. Is, is the sooner band that refined after practice? Of course, Diego. I'm not saying the first moment, but after practice, would you be? Would that? Would that? Would that be feasible? Yes. Yeah, so yes. I think that's yes. Coming up in a an up and the future, isn't it, Diego? You did say that was a a feature that's coming. Yes. Yeah. So great uh, observation. Uh, the that that will be something that, that we're working on now. I'm going to say, uh, Raymond, and as you were mentioning, first you need to master or, or you need to understand like the obstacle detection, uh, like the very basics, understanding the presence of an object, the distance of an object, and then you're basically taking it to a whole new level because, I mean, we're still um, talking 
pointing to you through variations on the wrist. So the right variations on the wrist, we're going to tell you if you're pointing at a person, if you're pointing at a wall, if you're pointing at whatever it is that you're that you're pointing at, right? So yes, uh, very good observation. You need to first master the the obstacle detection at its core, like distance and presence, and then move on to the newest version of the of the sonar. Yes. So basically, you're telling me I need to play with this thing for a month before I try and teach with it. <laughs> no, no, not for months. <laughs> no, not for months. But but you need to understand first, like like first goes number one, right? So first, you need to understand presence and distance, and then you move on to um, shapes and and textures. Yeah, like Stuart, I can already do that with my ears. So I'm, I'm fairly, I'm fairly um, up to date with the process. So I'm hoping that the sooner band, I, I should master that very, very quickly because I already understand the, the process as a mobility instructor. Mm. Yeah, Th and thank I you think, for answering oh, sorry, the questions. Raymond, anyway. um, just quickly, Raymond, as well, in the, the, the SUNU um, actual tutorials, you know, if, if you were to, to get one of these bands, um, you know, as a, an assistive technology trainer, I obviously, like yourself, you know, I, I'll take the time to, to learn, um, you know, the, 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 the device before I train people on it. But, you know, what's really useful in the SUNU tutorials, as Diego mentioned, which are online and in the app, there are actual obstacle detection exercises. And please do correct me if I'm wrong here, Diego, but... The, the, the great advantage is that you can actually perform these exercises with your SUNU band, you know, that they really are well um, laid out and the instructions are brilliant and you'd be amazed at um, how quickly you'll pick up the use of the obstacle detection in particular um, with the SUNU band if you go through the, 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 the 10 or 12 plus different exercises that's in the tutorial. Um, am I correct there, Diego? Absolutely, yes. So we try to be as, um, well, the thing is that in one hand you have, of course, the, like the experience and trying to make things as simple as possible. But of course, you also want to continue building up on the on, on the product. So um, yeah, I would say taking it as, as a video game level by level. Right, <laughs> um, and it's not it's not complicated. I mean, you just need to understand first the basics and then move on to more advanced features. Um, but yeah, everything is available online, and we try to update our tutorials uh, frequently. Good stuff. Thank you. Is that all good, Raymond? Yeah, thank you very much. It's been lovely to speak to you all. Um, thank you. I'll catch up with you later, Sam. Definitely, Bye -bye. yeah, yeah, nice. Thanks, and thanks, Brenda, as well. Yeah, great, um, excellent. Um, so we've got a few minutes left, everyone, just before we wrap up. Um, thanks, everybody, for those that have stuck around. Um, we do have some people that have to uh, go back to work or um, uh, go back to life. Um, but for anybody that's not caught the whole session, this will be available on YouTube um, later today. So um, you can pass it to colleagues, to friends, to family members um, if you need to. Um, good. I'm just having a just double checking a few more questions here. Um, yeah. So I think what obviously Raymond touched upon was: does it have the capability to, if you uh, if you needed, um, if you needed emergency help? Does the band have the capability to sort of geolocate your position so that the emergency services could find you? Um, the band doesn't have GPS built in, does it? it? It would have to be connected to your phone in order to 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 hook up to GPS. Yeah. So yeah, it's um, it's all on the app. It's all on the app. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, excellent. Well, I think. We've more or less covered everything. Um, if we've missed anything, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, there's so much packed into the chat box. Um, but as always, if we have missed any of your questions, just get in touch with either me, Stuart, or if you'd like to speak to Diego, I can put you in touch with Diego um, via email. Um, 
And most importantly, if you want to try it, if you, your students, your clients, patients, colleagues, whoever it might be, if they, if you want to try the Sooner Band, just let us know. And either I can come and visit you if you're in the north or if you're in Scotland um, or if you're further afield, our team stretches across the UK so we can come and see you and um, and we can we can we can show you the Sooner Band in person. Um, good. I'm just seeing here we've got a couple more comments here. Um, thank you, Andrea. Um, good. Um, so, Diego, is there anything else you, you'd like to, to add before we before we wrap up? Have you, you have pretty much covered everything. Uh, well, yeah, I, I don't know if there are questions that we uh, didn't answer. I, I apologize if we if we did not, but hopefully this um, session gives you a better idea of, of what the band is and what it can do. And most importantly, um, and that's something that we like to mention, the fact that we are always trying to improve the product. So again, uh, ideas on the app or things that you might need to uh, add like uh, an emergency feature that's a very good one uh, moving the sensor I mean it's obviously not possible for now because it's built-in hardware but that's something that we can consider for for future uh, versions right uh, but thank you everyone for for taking the time to to join us and I hope this was uh, useful and that you now uh, feel more more comfortable if you have been if you haven't gotten a sooner band yet to to get one with with sight and sound great thank you diego um i've also posted in the the chat box anybody um our other one of our other charity partners henshaws um over in the northwest um have recently uh, reviewed and they've written a blog and created a video um with the, with the sooner band so i've posted that in the chat box so please do have a look at that as well um and there's lots of great tutorials isn't the Diego on, on YouTube um, the blind life is a brilliant um, a brilliant review as well if you just type in the blind life on YouTube there's some great great stuff um, um, regarding the, the sooner band there as well um, good um, before we finish um, as always we'll be back in two weeks myself and Stuart um, two weeks time we're going to be looking at training um, software training hardware training um, the benefits of, of training um, using assistive technology. Um, we're hoping that actually some of the sight and sound uh, training team will join us. That's to be TBC. Um, but yeah, obviously Stuart's going to be discussing it from a charity's perspective, um, obviously as a, as a, um, a, a trainer of, of software. Um, yours in particular, aren't you, Stuart? Um, yeah. And obviously, from our point of view, Sight and Sound, we have a designated uh, training team as well. Um, we, we train on, on Braille devices, software, other pieces of hardware as well. Um, good. And then the Sight and Sound, uh, the Assistive Technology Social Hub calendar is, is quite exciting for the next few months. We've got Guide Dogs for the Blind uh, joining us um, in a couple of, uh, well, it's not next month, actually, I think it's a month after. Um, we've got a brand new Braille device to bring you, a Braille uh, Braille note taker called the Braille Sense 6 from Selvis. Um, so lots to come from the social hub. So please do stay tuned um, via our mail outs. You'll be, you'll be receiving more information soon um, via email or via social media as well. Um, and this presentation will be on YouTube either later today or tomorrow. So please do check in to our YouTube channel as well i think that is everything so uh all that's left to do is to thank you again diego for your time 4 a.m i mean what is it now it's 5 30 now in mexico so 5 30 uh, yes i'm an early bird don't worry <laughs> yeah well that's you know we really appreciate that um yeah so thank you thanks so much and Stuart, as always up in five thank you um yes and and again can i just echo my thanks to diego i i personally think that was absolutely fascinating and I've used, I'm lucky enough to have acquired funding for our charity up in Seascape for um, the Sunu Band and I still thought that was absolutely fascinating and I can't wait to see what's in the future um, for the Sunu Band as well. So we really appreciate you uh, joining us today, Diego. Absolutely. Stuart, it's a pleasure to um meet you again. I don't know if you remember, we met like 
I don't know, 2018, 2019. Well, hopefully after this is the situation's control, we can we can meet again, right? Definitely, <laughs> uh, definitely. Yes. Excellent. But thank you, guys. Um, thank you again. Thank you, everyone that's still with us. And well, you have an excellent day, right? We will. Sure. We will go and. Two hours uh, ahead. <laughs> yeah, go and have a sleep. Um, good stuff. All right, guys. You, everyone, take care. Stay safe, and we'll see you in two weeks' time. Um, but please do get in touch if you've got any more questions. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thanks, Diego.